When it comes to the emissions your car produces over its lifetime, of course a large portion of those are emitted at the tailpipe, which is why switching to electric is good. But we also need to think about the emissions produced when your car is actually being made. So if you want your car to be as sustainable as possible, then it makes sense to buy one from a manufacturer who's working to reduce the impact their manufacturing and transportation has on the environment. But how do you know which of the car makers they are? At electrifying.com, we've come up with a simple way to help you. It's called our Green Hero Awards, and we give it to brands we think are, you guessed it, green heroes. And for the first recipient of an electrifying.com Green Heroes Award, I've ended up here in Sunderland. With that, the Nissan Leaf. I do love a bit of high vis. Sunderland, as well as being full of lovely people, is the home of the Nissan factory that produces the Leaf, and it's beginning on a big transformation to drive Nissan's efforts to achieve carbon neutrality throughout the life cycle of its products, rather than just the shiny bit at the end. Now, Nissan has had a wind farm and solar panels on site for about 15 years, but things have definitely stepped up a gear. Along with its partners, it's invested over a billion pounds in order to create an electric vehicle hub. Now, what that's going to do is combine car manufacturing, battery production and renewable energy to capture carbon and make cars as sustainably as possible. The obvious place to kick things off is here, where the cars are actually made. This is one of the production lines that produces the Leaf, and it's a hive of activity. See these? These are Leaf motors. Look, there's a chassis getting a battery pack. Now, batteries tend to be quite heavy, so they have to use a special lift. Watch this. Some windows going in, and some other things that I'm not actually sure what they are. They even take a shower. Now, a typical car is made up of lots and lots of different materials and thousands upon thousands of individual components. And that means loads of different things like alloys, metal, steel, glass, rubber, fabric, plastics. You get the idea. This Sunderland plant actually handles over 5 million parts per day. And that is one hell of a spreadsheet. It's giving me a headache just thinking about it. So what is Nissan already doing? Well, there are the big things like this. Now this is called the Cyclone and it's an on-site sorting and recycling facility that can actually get through 7.4 tonnes of scrap metal an hour. So when you stamp out an aluminium bonnet or door and you have offcuts, they get sent here, graded, sorted and shredded so that the material can be used again, reducing waste and helping towards Nissan's sustainability ambition. They even hoover up the dust and make tiny little aluminium bricks out of it. Now, the Sunderland site already had a chunk of renewable energy on site, starting with some wind turbines over 15 years ago, and then later expanded with a little solar farm. But now the idea is to really expand that idea so that you get renewable energy, produce it on site, use it on site, and store it on site. And judging by the fact it's quite windy here today, I think that's going to work. The first phase is a 20 megawatt solar farm that will double the amount of renewable energy generated at the plant to 20% of the plant's needs and should be completed later this year. Nissan's aim is for the wind and solar farms to one day power the entire factory and its local suppliers. And when the batteries have reached the end of their useful lives, they can actually end up back here in a kind of giant battery energy storage facility. So when it's particularly windy or sunny, they store all the power here and use it in the factory when it's not windy or indeed sunny. It's the circle of life with batteries. I like it. And don't forget, the aim is to link the system to the national grid, so it'll help smooth out the peaks and troughs in demand across the board. It's proper joined up thinking. 
Then there's the whole issue of the batteries themselves. Nissan's battery manufacturing partner, Envision AESC, is building a second factory that makes batteries, what's called a Gigafactory, right next door to the place where they're going to be used in the next generation of electric Nissans. So you're not having to transport one of the biggest, heaviest and most important parts of the car very far. Now Nissan's aim is for the next generation of batteries produced here to be 30% more efficient than anything else we have at the moment, improving stuff that matters like range and efficiency. But it also means that cars could be cheaper and lighter. They're looking at how to make batteries that don't use rare earth elements, that have sustainable production, that are more efficient with their battery chemistry. This is all part of Nissan's grand plan to be carbon neutral across the life cycle of its products and all of its operations by 2050, which will make your electric car as sustainable as possible. And that's the sort of thing along with electrifying.com, that will help us all on our journey to a sustainable future. So well done, Nissan. You are the first recipient of an electrifying.com Green Heroes Award. We're taking a look at the bigger picture and giving it a trophy. It's a sustainable recycled trophy, obviously. <laughs>